الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهي لنا من أمرنا رشدا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم رحمة الله الحمد لله it's a great blessing to gather for the uh, remembrance of Allah Ta'ala and the remembrance of his blessed Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of the great inheritors of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Uthman al-Hiyari, Rahimahullah. He was a great Imam who is from Ray in Persia and he moved to Nisapur where he studied. He spent his entire life studying and seeking to learn and implement the prophetic way. And he he died in the year 298 after Hijra, uh, the same year that Imam Junaid passed away. Passed away. Allah be pleased with them all. And in uh, Nisapur, uh, in, in his biography, Imam Dhahabi describes Abu Uthman al-Hiyari as an eminent Imam. He says he is uh, al-Imam al-Qudwa, uh, someone that was emulate, someone to be emulated or taken as an example. He was, he calls him Sheikh al-Islam, which is a title reserved for only the greatest of our ulama, generally speaking. He, uh, and he, uh, so he was once sitting with one of his companions, Abu Uthman al-Hayri, and he asked his student, he said, Alastum tarona an'inda dhikri salihin tanzil al-Rahma. He says that, do you not uh, hold the prince, hold fast to the principle that when the righteous are mentioned, divine mercy descends. And the student said, of course, and Abu Uthman, rahimahullah, he says, Fa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyid as-Salihin. He says, in that case, Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the liege lord, he is the uh, master of all the righteous. So if mentioning any righteous person is a means of mercy descending, then what about mentioning the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, and that the, uh, the, ta- the title for the Mawlid uh, this year is Triumph During Tribulation, the, the prophetic light, Triumph During tri- Tribulation. Tribulation is very much the, what defines the context of the seerah, that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam underwent the most difficult of trials. He was orphaned uh, at birth, losing his father before birth. In fact, he, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his mother, uh, he lost his mother, Amina, at the age of six, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he went under the care of his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, whom he lost at the age of eight, a couple years later, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then he was brought under the care of Abu Talib and raised in his house, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He had seven children total in his life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, six with uh, our spiritual mother, Lady Khadija, Radullah Anha, uh, Qasim, and then uh, Zainab, uh, Ruqayya, Um Kulthum, and Fatima, Radullah Anhum, and then Abdullah, and then he had a seventh child with Mari al Qubtiya Ibrahim, alaihissalam. And that of the seven children, he lost six of them in his life, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, all except Lady Fatima radhiyallahu anha, that he buried with his own blessed hand, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was persecuted by his people, his own kinsmen, his own family, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was uh, ridiculed. He was fought against, uh, hostility was shown to him. Uh, all throughout the prophetic life, the Blessed Sira, we find tribulation after tribulation, trial after trial. And uh, of course, when he was asked what his most difficult time was, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, he referred to uh, the year, which in the books of Sira is called Am al Huzn, the year of sadness. And in that year, he lost two uh, very close loved ones, Abu Talib, who was like a father figure for him and who not only raised him, but 
was his was the means for his political protection in Mecca. That uh, despite the hostilities and ridicule directed against him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, the Quraysh could not wage an all-out war. They could not actually uh, attack him fully or threaten his blessed life uh, while Abu Talib was alive. Why? Because of the tribal system of the Quraysh and Abu Talib being the head of his clan, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he maintain that protection of him sallallahu alaihi wasallam so the and and on top of that abu talib was like a father figure for him in fact when he was 12 years old according to the hadith in which he traveled with abu talib to syria and he met the monk buhaira and buhaira noticed signs of his prophethood and asked him sallallahu alaihi wasallam before he asked the prophet questions he asked uh, abu talib what is his relation with you and abu talib says that he is my son he is my son. Buhayra says that's impossible because the scriptures had that the that the last prophet would be orphaned, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Abu Talib then admits, actually, he is my nephew. But the fact that he calls him my son, it shows that the intimate, the close relationship that they had, and Abu Talib lo loved him like a son, and in fact more than his own children. And Abu Talib wrote a lot of poetry, very eloquent poetry that, in fact. Ibn Qayyim says is mo was more eloquent than the the classics of Quraysh that were hanging on the Kaaba, uh, those sort of you know legendary poetic works that were so great that they hung on the Kaaba. Abu Talib, his poetry was in fact arguably more eloquent than those, the Mu'allaqat, and he has tremendous love and praise for the Prophet in that poetry, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he loses Abu Talib, and along with the political protection afforded through that relationship and then of course within a couple of days he loses his beloved blessed wife companion best friend lady khadija radiallahu anha she is wazira to sitq she is the minister of truth minister of uh, of of you know uh, genuine support for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam she was of course the one uh, that Allah Ta'ala decreed that he would have m most of his children, six of the seven, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was in fact the one that Allah Ta'ala decreed that under her, uh, what went, during their marriage, that wahi began. And in the famous hadith of the beginning of Revelation, Badul Wahi, that our mother Aisha describes, Allah be pleased with her, that, that when he came back from Hira after Revelation and the encounter with Gabriel, that she comforted him. So she has this maqam, this station, Allah be pleased with her, that kalla wallahi la yukhzikallahu abada. And she says that Allah will never, you know, uh, for, for, forsake you. That inna ka la tasilu rahim wa taksibu al-ma'doom wa tu'inu ala nawab al-haq. And she, she mentions his virtues, that you are someone that you maintain, maintain kinship bonds and you help the people in need and you serve the poor, uh, etc. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she was someone that, radiallahu anha, that he in fact said that Allah uh, gave, uh, provided me. It was provision from Allah that he loved her. Because uh, later in his life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, he would st still think of her. He would send gifts to her friends. Sometimes when, he would, when they would slaughter a sheep, he would send part of that meat to the friends of Khadija, thinking about her, radiallahu anha. And he told our mother Aisha, Inni, in Sahih Muslim, the hadith, Inni qad ruziqtu hubbaha, that I, Allah Ta'ala has given me the provision of love of Khadija. And her rank is so great, she's the best of women, that, uh, of course, uh, Gabriel came once in the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, that Jibreel alayhi salam came and said, Khadija's on her way with a pot of stew and meat and some drink. And when she comes, Right, فَأَقْرِئْهَا عَلَيْهَا السَّلَامِ مِنْ رَبِّهَا وَمِنِّي أو كما قال, That convey to her salam from her Lord and from me, Jibreel alayhi salam. وَبَشِّرْهَا And give her tidings of baitin fil الْجَنَّةِ of a, of a house in paradise min qasab from, from reeds لَيْسَ فِيهِ سَخَبْ وَلَا نَصَبْ In which there is no uh, raising of voices, there's no shouting, and there's no exhaustion and fatigue. 
and some of the ulama mention that uh, uh, of the wisdoms of this description that, that the, her home in paradise has no shouting and no fatigue or exhaustion because not once in their marriage did she raise her voice to the Prophet and not once in their marriage did she uh, annoy him in any way or cause him fatigue, cause him frustration that the perfection of their relationship, the perfection of her being a blessed wife. And what is to say of her rank? That Allah Ta'ala Himself sends salam to her. SubhanAllah. That Jibreel alayhi salam, when he came with the salam, it wasn't simply from Jibreel, it wasn't simply from him. He says, convey to her, O oh Allah's Messenger, convey to her salam from her Lord and then from me. And so what is the rank of Lady Khadija radu anha? The Prophet loses her in the year of sadness, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then, of course, when he makes his da'wah to Ta'if, he goes to the neighboring city of Ta'if and he preaches and invites them to Islam. And in addition, he's seeking support so that he can continue his preaching in Mecca, that the, perhaps they might afford him the political support now that Abu Talib had passed. And we know the story is well known that uh, the leaders of Ta'if mocked him. They were, uh, they were rude and, uh, and, and they ridiculed him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were sarcastic with him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they said vile things. And then later when he continued making da'wah to the others, the, 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 the public of Ta'if, then the, the, they uh, sort of riled up the people and they got the sufaha, the, the foolish and the ignorant, to be uh, host, hostile to him. And they made two rows. And they got the, uh, the, the servants and the children, the slaves and the children, to throw stones at him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in one riwayah, Zayd ibn Haritha was with him, radiallahu anhu, and trying to shield with his body, trying to shield the Prophet from the, from the harm, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But despite that, that he was pelted so much, and, and when he would, uh, sometimes he, in, the in the description in the seerah, his blessed body, he would go to the ground because of it, it was so much, and that they would lift him by his arms and push him forward, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, to the extent that there was uh, bl blood, his blessed blood uh, on his blessed legs, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And so this is the most difficult time uh, the most the most intense tribulation for him. What does he do? He turns to Allah Ta'ala. He teaches us how to deal with our most difficult moments. He teaches us the adab, the proper etiquette of dealing with hardship, dealing with constriction, dealing with abuse is firstly to direct ourselves to Allah Ta'ala and he makes the famous dua, one of the most beautiful duas in the sunnah and in the seerah that he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahumma ilayka ashku da'fa quwwati wa qillata hilati wa hawani ala nas O oh Allah, to you alone do I complain of the, my, my weakness and the, my lack of resources and the abuse I'm facing, by the, the, the abuse of, and, and humiliation that people are directing towards me. Uh, and that... Ya Arham ar oh most merciful of those who show mercy. Anta Rabbul Mustadafin, you are the Lord of the weak, the disenfranchised. Wa anta Rabbi, and you are my Lord. That manifesting his servanthood, direct servanthood to Allah, turning to Allah, you are my Lord. And by implication that he is manifesting that he is the Abd, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the servant of Allah. Anta Rabbi. To whom will you entrust me? To some far off person that will abuse me. You know, Ta'if was not his family. His family is Quraysh. He had to go outside to a different city. To some far off person, a stranger, not, not a familiar, not a relative, not one of the Quraysh. To, to one of the Banu Thaqif of Ta'if. To, to, who's going to who's going to just abuse me, 
O ila qaribin malaktahu amri, or to a to a near person, a close person, a relative, to whom you have given them control over my affair, malaktahu amri, who who has uh, control of of my situation. In lam yakun bika alayya ghadabun fala ubali. In any case, so long as your anger is not on me. O oh Allah, so long as your anger is not on me, fala ubali. I don't mind. I don't mind. This was his concern. That is this a, a manifestation that Allah Ta'ala is upset with me? Or is this simply a test that is an expression of Allah's love? And of course, for his for him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, everything that happened was an expression of the intimate love of Allah for him. That he is Habibullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But this is something for us to have introspection of is look at the etiquette, is that if we're faced with a circumstance that leaves us straightened and constricted, that we go back to Allah in servitude and we ask Allah and we also ask ourselves that is this a, is this a sign that Allah Ta'ala is upset with me or is this a raising of my ranks? How do we tell? We make tawbah. We, we, we ask ourselves, am I involved in something? Am I persisting in something that is displeasing to Allah Ta'ala? And also a way for us to gauge, a way for us to uh, measure or have an indication of why the test is coming, whether as an expression of Allah's wrath, God forbid, or Allah's pleasure and love, is how is our response during it? Do we have the patience and fortitude and the contentment with Allah and His decree, which would indicate, as Shaykh Abdul Qadir al-Jilani, rahimahullah, he said, if, if a person has patience and is content with Allah's decree, that's a sign that the test is coming from Allah's pleasure and love. But if a person is ha lacking patience and falling apart and, and, and not having fortitude, it's a sign that the test itself is from the displeasure of Allah, God forbid. And so back to the dua then he says, As long as you're not angry with me, I don't mind. But then what does he say? However, well-being, safety, security, afia from you, sauli, it gives me more room. It's 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 wider for me. And subhanallah. And in the hadith he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the in the other hadith, he says, the best dua to make, to the best thing to ask Allah Ta'ala for after yaqeen, after certitude, is afia and mu'afa, well-being, health, safety, security. Afia encompasses all good in terms of one's one's life and livelihood. And so he says, he, he says, as long as you're not angry, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as long as you're not angry, I don't mind, but your afia is easier for me. It gives me more room. And then what does he say? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this connects, you know, the title of, of the Mawlid that the Prophet's light, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, triumphed during tribulation. Because his light, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is a mirror and expression of the light of Allah Ta'ala. Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. Allah is the light and the source of all light in the heavens and the earth. And so what does he say next? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A'udhu bi nuri wa I seek refuge and protection in the light of your countenance, the light of the wajh of Allah. And in our theology, wajhuhu, Vatuhu, the, the, the countenance of Allah is the very being, the very entity of Allah. Wadatuhu wujuduhu, and his entity is his very being, Jalla Thanauhu, capital B, being, the necessary being of Allah Ta'ala. And so he, he says, I see, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I seek refuge in the light of your countenance, the light of your very being that illuminates all darknesses and by which all affairs of this life and the next are made right. This is the Islamic answer to the problem of evil and suffering. The philosophical problem of evil and suffering, the answer to that is 
is in this prophetic moment and in all the moments of the Prophet ﷺ, but explicitly in this dua, in this supplication, because it's the light of Allah that removes all darknesses. In other words, if we recognize that Allah Ta'ala is behind, is the, is, is the one governing all of our tribulations, is the one governing, is the, is the owner and master of every moment of existence, that Allah Ta'ala has decreed everything eternally, recognizing that is recognizing nurus samawati wal ard the the light of the heavens and earth and so ashraq al dhulumat so the dhulumat the darknesses of our tough times and our constrictions and our moments of 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 anxiety and depression and the trauma that we face that those darknesses are illuminated by nurus samawati wal ard allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself and so tawakkul you know trusting relying on Allah, relying on the illuminator and the light of the heavens and earth li- lights up the darknesses. It, 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 it shows the light of the dark, behind the darkness. So he says this, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مِنْ أَنْ يَنْزِلْ بِي غَضَبُكْ أَوْ يَحِلَّ عَلَيَّ سَخَطُكْ لَكَ الْعُتْبَ حَتَّى تَرْضَى That I seek your refuge in your light, O Allah, lest your anger or wrath descend upon me you have the right you have the right to blame as long as you're pleased you have the right to blame and censure as long as you're pleased wala hawla wala quwwata illa bik and there's no strength there's no power except with you this is the light this is the the what is the light of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at heart right um, uh, you know of the most salient uh, virtues of his light sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his perf- perfect the perfection of his slavehood the perfection of his servitude, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and al iftiqaru ila Allah, expressing our need for Allah, expressing for the servant to express his need for Allah Taala. This is what the Prophet does, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is what he teaches us. One of the contemporaries of Imam Junaid, Abu Bakr al Kitani, he said, "Man ida saha al iftiqaru ila Allah, saha al ghina bihi." If the if one's need for Allah is authentic and real, then one's enrichment through Allah will be authentic and real. That, that the, the darkness of our circumstance is illuminated when we go to Allah with need, when we express our absolute intrinsic need for Allah. فَاقَتُكَ لَكَ ذَاتِيَةٌ Ibn Al-Ta'ila says, your need for Allah is intrinsic to what you are, is intrinsic to who you are. It never leaves us. And when tribulations occur, they are but reminders of what we forget, that we need Allah in every moment. This is why the adab of the righteous is that even in the comfort of their homes, when they make dua, they make dua as if they're drowning. They make dua as if they're drowning, even in the comfort of their homes. Because... Our reality is we're always drowning. We're always in need of Allah Ta'ala. And so that Al-Iftiqaru ila Allah. This is the light of servitude that the Prophet taught us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the hadith of Tirmidhi, the Prophet taught us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna idham al-jaza ma'a idham al-bala. The greatness, the magnitude of the reward is commensurate with the magnitude of the tribulation. The greater the tribulation, the greater the reward from Allah Ta'ala. And then he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wa inna Allah Ta'ala idha ahabba qawman ibtalahum. And verily Allah, Most High, when He loves a people, He tests them. When He loves a people, He tests them. There's so much tribulation happening in the Ummah right now. It's a sign that Allah loves this Ummah. Because this is the Ummah of Habibullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So insofar as we are the ummah of the beloved of Allah, we are the ummah that is beloved to Allah, so long as we adhere to his way, so long as we emulate him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى إِذَا أَحَبَّ قَوْمٍ ابْتَلَاهُمْ فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرِّضَى وَمَنْ سَخِتَ فَلَهُ السُّخْتِ So whoever, and again, this is how we know why the test is happening, it's about our response. So whoever... فَمَنْ رَضِيَ Whoever has rida, whoever is content and satisfied with Allah, فَلَهُ الرِّضَى They shall receive 
the divine satisfaction and the divine good pleasure. But whoever is angry and frustrated at Allah, God forbid, then they receive the same from Allah Ta'ala. And so approximating rida, always seeking to increase in our contentment with Allah Ta'ala. What is the means by which we increase in our rida? Abu Uthman al-Hayri, the same imam we began with today, one of his teachings, Rahimullah Ta'ala, and he was an eminent imam, Hakim, the great hadith master of Nisapur at his time, he said, لَمْ يَخْتَلِفْ مَشَايِخُنَا أَنَّ أَبَا أُثْمَانْ مُجَابَ الدَّعْوَى He said, uh, none of our teachers, none of the sheikhs of, of Nisapur had a difference of opinion. They were in consensus and agreement that Abu Uthman al hayri was someone who was mujab al dawa that his dua was always answered immediately. And... Uh, Imam Dhahabi says Abu Uthman al hayri was for the, for the people of Khurasan, of Persia, like Imam Junaid was for the people of Iraq. He was at the level of Imam Junaid. That Abu Uthman, what did he say? Radulanu, he says, A tafweed muqaddimatul rida. A tafweed raddu ma jahilta ila alimihi. He says, tafweed is to give back to Allah what you don't understand is to return back to Allah, to consign to Allah what you don't understand. amri Allah. I consign my affair to Allah. I don't understand why this is happening. amri Allah. I consign my affair to Allah. And he says then, what tafweed muqaddimatul rida. And tafweed is the precursor to rida. It is the uh, means by which we can attain unto true contentment with Allah Ta'ala and his decree. And then he says, Abu Uthman, rahimahullah, wa rida babu Allah al-Azam. And contentment and satisfaction with Allah is the greatest door to Allah. Is the, the great, greatest door to Allah Ta'ala. And so the, what did the Prophet say in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the authentic hadith, ajaban lil mu'min. How amazing is the true believer? La yaqdi Allahu lahu shay'an illa kana khayran lah. Allah Ta'ala does not decree anything for the believer except that it's good for him. Ajaban lil mu'min, la yaqdi Allahu lahu shay'an illa kana khayran la. Allah Ta'ala, how wondrous and amazing is the believer. Allah decrees nothing for him save that it is good for him. And in other hadith of Muslim Imam Ahmad, the Prophet Wasallam was counseling one of his companions that had a... a, a defect something with his gait the way he walked was a problem and the prophet was counseling him and he said but i have this uh this uh disability which is why he and and the prophet insisted that he he took his counsel of of had to do with his dress his his garment and then what what does he say sallallahu alaihi wasallam fa inna kull khalq allah fa inna fa inna kull khalq allah azza wa jal hasan fa inna kull khalq allah azza wa jal Azza wa Jal Hasan. He says, do it anyways, even if your 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 disability will be more manifest. Because why? Because everything in the creation of Allah is beautiful. Everything in the creation of Allah is Hasan. And th this is one of the secrets of the light of the Prophet ﷺ, is that this is how he saw the world, even in the year of sadness, even with the loss of his, of his loved ones. Abu Talib and Khadija anha, even with the circumstances at Ta'if, his vantage, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is always husn, the beauty, right? The beauty of Allah, because the beauty is the beauty of Allah. And what did he name his grandchildren? Hassan and Hussein, from the same root. And Imam Hussein Ibn Ali, radiallahu anhum, what did he say with respect to dealing with tribulations? to manifest the beauty in, 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 in located in his blessed name, Hussein, like his brother Hassan, Ali Musalam, what does he say? Man i'tamada ala husni ikhtiyari lahi lahu lam, yataman, lam yatamanna ghayra makhtarullahu lahu. Subhanallah. Man i'tamada ala husni ikhtiyari lahi lahu lam yatamanna ghayra makhtarullahu lahu. He says, whoever relies on the beautiful choice 
of Allah Ta'ala for him, he will, he will not desire anything other than what Allah chose for him. Whoever trusts and relies on the beautiful selection of Allah for him, he will not desire anything other than what Allah Ta'ala chose for him. And so the, the beauty of the Prophet وسلم, his blessed light, is a perfect reflection of the Fatiha itself, which begins after the Basmalah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Whatever our circumstances, whatever we're facing, the good times, the bad times, the times of joy and elation, the times, uh, uh, the times of joy, the times of elate, elatedness, elation, or the times of constriction, depression, sadness, pain, what rings true and what should be reverberating, echoing in our hearts and on our tongues is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Whatever pain, whatever difficulty we experience, all praise belongs to Allah, Lord of all the worlds, Nur al-Samawati wal We ask Allah Ta'ala to make His people who manifest these teachings, who reflect this beautiful light of the Prophet Wasallam in our own character and behavior, inwardly and outwardly, and that, uh, that Allah Ta'ala relieve our difficulties and the difficulties of the Ummah. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.